Now we're going to look at three-dimensional solid geometry. And again, the whole thing is, is when you are an engineer or a scientist or anything in that general direction, you don't want to just be memorizing formulas because when you memorize formulas is whenever you forget what in the name of all that is holy that you are doing. So that's what we're going to talk about dimensional analysis as well, because then whenever you get kind of confused, you'll be like, oh yeah, it's this. Now there is some memorization, of course, involved, but the more you understand the formulas, um, the better off you're going to be. Now, unfortunately, the one I'm going to start with is the sphere, which is more memorization, um, because especially kind of depending on where you are in math, the way to do this and to figure it out is to use calculus, which I'm not going to do right now because that's a whole other video. So pretend this is a sphere and it has a radius of R. Good. Now, um, when we were talking about two dimensional things, we talked about linear feet and then um, whatever you call it, area. Now with um, 3D figures, so pretend these are all in 3D. Um, with 3D figures, you have two different measurements as well. You have something called surface area and then something called volume. Now surface area is again the idea of painting, painting the whole thing. So painting, and unfortunately I can't really color this any differently, um, but then volume is the idea of filling, okay? So again, if I'm going to be painting something, I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to do, you know, 30 square feet of paint would cover this sphere. But if I'm going to be filling it, I need something that's going to be in like cubic feet. So I need cubic feet of air, cubic feet of water, um, or something along those lines. So we're looking for cubic feet, um, dimensions that are cubed in a volume and dimensions that are square in a surface area. Now, in order to do surface area and volume, like I said, this actually does require some calculus. Um, so we're not going to get into the derivation of these particular formulas, but um, the surface area of a sphere is for pi r squared. And again, you see the dimensions. We have dimensionless, dimensionless, and then this one is in feet. So we have feet squared. So dimensionless times dimensionless times feet squared is going to give us feet squared. Um, and then for the volume, it's four thirds, that's an ugly four. I mean, not ugly, every four has a mother that loves him somewhere, but um, four thirds pi r cubed. So again, here, four thirds is dimensionless, dimless, and then dimensionless. And then the r cubed is in feet, but it's cubed, so we have cubic feet, so the dimensions work out. Now, if you happen to be a calculus -y person, and I don't necessarily think this always works, but the volume we said was 4 thirds pi r squared. Um, if you take the DDR, so I can for some reason always remember 4 thirds pi r cubed. There we go, 4 thirds pi r cubed. I can always remember 4 thirds pi r cubed, but I can never remember 4 pi r squared, and I don't know why, but I know if I take the derivative with respect to r, I get 4 pi r squared, and that's a surface area. So again, I haven't done this in long enough to remember, but I know that if I DDR the volume of a sphere, I get the surface area of a sphere. Off the top of my head, I don't think that works for other things. It might, but in a different kind of way. But if anything else, if nothing else, it helps me remember it for the sphere. So again, you have the surface area is 4 pi r squared, and the volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so you probably have to commit that one to memory. And even if you can derive it, it's just easier to memorize it than derive it. It's one of those things. Now, everything else is actually, for me, I guess, maybe easier to derive than to memorize. So if we're looking at a rectangular prism, and a rectangular prism is going to look something like this. And we have a length, a width, and a height. Okay? So if we're going to uh, calculate the surface area, that is one not straight rectangle, your prism thingy. All right. So the idea is we have this going here on the back. Okay, so if we're going to do the surface area, basically I have two sides that look like this. Um, I have two sides that look like this. And then it's going to look funky here. Two sides that look like this. So let me do those two first. So the two yellow sides, so for surface area, I have two yellow sides, so I have two, and those dimensions are width times height. So if I'm going to paint those, I have width times height, and then I have two pink sides that are going to be, um, let's see, the dimension of that, that H goes there, but it also goes here. 
So, oh wait, I'm looking at the other side. Sorry, I'm looking at the bottom and the top. The two pink sides are gonna have two length times width. And then we have the two front. Actually, let me delete these other colors so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And of course I deleted part of my wonky thingamabob. All right, and so then I'm gonna do the front here and the back here. Okay, and this is a, just not a good way to do this, but hopefully you kind of get what I'm doing. So the front and the back and the dimensions on that, that's what I was doing a second ago. This height is the same thing as this height. So I have twice the length times the height. So it's basically a linear combination of all three dimensions and then you just double it. And again, looking at the dimensions, you have dimensionless, dimensionless, and then you have feet times feet. And then this one's gonna be plus feet times feet, feet times feet, plus feet times feet, plus feet times feet. So I've got feet squared, plus feet squared, plus feet squared, and square feet plus square feet plus square feet is square feet. So the dimensions check out. Now, for volume, thank you. For volume, um, what you can think about, if you don't want to memorize this formula, something you can think about is the idea of, okay, so what I'm going to have on the bottom is I'm going to have like a little plate that's like kind of like that high. Okay, so it's like this little plate here. And then I'm going to, that little stupid red thing's bothering me. So I have one plate there. All right, I don't know if I can get that. Right. So I have a plate there. And then I'm going to put another plate down. Let me kind of see it go back here. So that's my next plate. And then I'm going to put another plate down. Like that. So I'm going to put another plate down. All right, and then you start to fill it up. Another plate. And there you go. So basically, I'm going to keep filling up those plates. Now, the area of the bottom plate is going to be length times width. And then the idea is, as I stack these, I would have H plates going up. So I have H plates that have a area of length times width. And then of course, if I multiply all those together, I get a feet times a feet times a feet, which is a cubic feet. Now, of course, that doesn't prove that the equation is correct aside from logic. And it just means that it's least dimensionally sound. So the volume of a, what do you call it? <laughs> the volume of a rectangular prism is length times width times height. Okay, good, good. Now we're gonna be using that same concept. Now that concept of, of taking these plates and stacking them on each other, I hope that makes sense because that really helps the cylinder equation make a lot of sense. So let's say we've got ourselves a cylinder of radius R and height H, okay? So as a radius R and the height of H. Now I'm actually gonna do volume first because I think it makes the most sense to do since we just talked about those stacks. So basically the idea is I've got this stack here and then I've got another one and then I've got another one and then I've got another one and I'm just filling it up with these shapes. And the question is, what shape am I filling it up with? All right, so think about what kind of shape you fill up with. I was thinking about coasters. Like coasters sometimes come in these little things where, well, you wouldn't have 16 coasters, but you might have like little round coasters that all sit in a little cylindrical thing. So basically, if you looked at it from the top, all of those would look like circles, right? And they would all have a radius R. So we know that the area is, remember, pi R squared. So the area is pi r squared, but I have each of them going up. So I have pi r squared h. So the volume is pi r squared h. And you might be like, well, wait a second. I thought everything had to be cubed in order to be a volume. Well, remember that this is dimensionless. Dimensionless. This is feet squared. But h is also measured in feet. So I have feet squared times feet, which is cubic feet. So that is correct. So pi r squared h is still going to give me cubic feet. Okay. Now we can use the same theory to come up with the surface area. Um, essentially what you can think about, 
well, not the same theory, sorry, it's, it's a different theory, but if you wanna make a cylinder, basically what you do is you get a piece of paper and you cut out two circles, okay? And you would, you know, rotate the, the flat plane. The best way to do this really is to get a piece of paper. It's a little bit harder to do on pencil, um, on a screen like this, but the idea is you get that pencil and paper, or this piece of paper, and you kind of rotate, make a cylinder out of it, and then on the top of the bottom, you would have circles. So if we're looking at the surface area, what we want to do is we want to paint the circles and paint the piece of paper. And we look at what dimensions we know. So we know that this is the radius. So we have a radius and we have a height. These are the only dimensions that we know. Now for the top and the bottom, that's not too bad because we know they're the same size and we know that their area is pi r squared. So we can say that the surface area is going to be 2 pi r squared, but then the question is, what is going to be the surface area of this? Now we know that one of the dimensions is height, but the question is, what's the other dimension? Okay, so if we look at the other dimension, again, the idea is if we roll this into a cylinder from the top, it's going to look like a circle, and then it's going to go, you know, down with the height, this direction. Um, but if we look at it, it's a circle. Whenever we unroll it, essentially what we're doing is we're taking these two, let me take these two points of a circle here and here, and we're unraveling it so that they end up here and here. Oops, color. Here and here. So those are the two sides, or not the two sides, that's the length of that circle. So the top line that we have here is the same length as if we took that circle and just flattened it out, okay? And we know that the length of that would have to be the same thing as the perimeter. And we know that the perimeter of a circle is 2 pi r, okay? So we have 2 pi r. That means that this dimension up here at the top is 2 pi r. So we have a rectangle that has um, an area of h times 2 pi r. And so that's going to be the total surface area of a sphere is the top, the area of the top and the area of the bottom plus the area of the rectangle. And again, if we do dimensional analysis, we've got dimensionless dimensionless times feet squared plus feet times dimensionless dimensionless times feet. So we have feet squared plus feet squared. That gives us again feet squared. So we get the same. I mean, we get something that's dimensionally consistent at least. But again, this is a formula I tend not to remember because it just, I just, I'm, how shall I say it? Stubborn. <laughs> I'm stubborn and I'm not going to memorize this stupid formula, but I am going to just derive it every time I need it um, because I just know that it's the area at the top and the bottom plus the circumference times the height. And again, this is what we were talking about with um, going into science and engineering and all that kind of stuff is it's not enough just to know the formula. If you know where the formula comes from, then it's a lot easier to memorize or to know in general. Woot.